Hey everyone, it's Lisa, and today is Tuesday, and it's a rainy, yucky Tuesday, and I just attempted to do a tutorial. I did this look with the Visart Dark Matte Palette, and I ended up having to pull in the um, number one matte palette in there too, because I always need that one for my um, highlight, and just to kind of blend it out, and I had several, you know, things go awry in the video, but that's just the way it is, and I hope that you'll pick up one little something that you like out of it, and so I'll the first be right thing I'm going to do it. is put on my Dr. Jart. This is kind of taking the place of my Rachel K CC Cream, and it is the Dr. Jart BB Disappoor, and you do not need very much. I've noticed if I put too much on, especially with the Marc Jacobs, that it can get just too thick looking. It only comes in one color, but you'll see what it does. It's just, um, I usually put it right here on my cheeks because it not only does it um, like fill in your pores, but it kind of cancels out that redness and it gives you just a little bit more coverage. So I usually just try to put a little bit and then just spread it out real thin like that. And I use this as a primer. It just gives me that extra coverage. Like Using that. the Marc Jacobs uh, Remarkable in Beige 33. And my one complaint is, I don't know if I have done something bad to mine. I know I did travel with it one time, but mine just stays yucky and messy. And um, I hate that. So it comes out like this. And what I usually do is just put some on the back of my hand. I have found that if I put it on my face, sometimes I put too much. Ugh. And see, it like squeezes out. It's just, it's pretty gross. I usually try to wipe it off. Okay, one of my favorite foundation brushes, and I just found it. I could not find it for the longest time. And I went through all my brushes and finally found it. It is this Sedona Lace. It's part of this whole pink... Um, I think they're just like, I don't know, they're, um, they're not natural fibers, but I'll put the collection down below. But for some reason, I've always loved this brush for foundation. It's the 602. And I do have the brush that comes with that remarkable foundation, but it's so big. I find that it's so big, I can't get it right where I want to. So I have, I like this one a little bit better. Okay, so dot it in there, and this foundation covers like nothing you have ever seen. So be real careful and try to spread it out as much as you can. So when you put it on there, and I go over my eyelids, and try to just buff it in as much as you can. And I know you are thinking, dag on, my forehead looks so big. <laughs> And it probably is, but when you'll see how when you get the uh, contour and stuff, it helps you out with that. Okay, and then I try to go down my neck with what's left on the brush. And then I just keep going over it, trying to work it in on the end of my nose, Look at my temples, work it into my hairline. Then I make sure I get it all over my eyes real good because that's going to serve as my base and my, sorry, like my warmth to my face. Okay, gosh, terrible. Okay, so I, the next thing I'm going to do is my Giorgio Armani Luminous Foundation Palette. run upstairs and downstairs, so if I seem out of breath, <laughs> it's because I've gone up and down those stairs and jumped over the baby gate probably, I would say, 10 times in the last 20 minutes. Okay, so this is the Giorgio Armani um, Luminous Silk Compact Dual Use Powder, and it's number four. And when you look at it at first, it's going to look, I don't know, to me it looks like it might be a little light, but it's really the perfect color. And you'll see that it adds a little bit of dimension, and I don't know, I just feel like it, it adds something to this foundation. So I'm using the good old 
Sephora 55 um, powder brush. You can still get this, but it looks a little bit different now. It's got a black handle, and it's still pretty good. It's not, I don't know, it might be in my, in my head. I don't think it's quite as good, but it's still good enough. It's still pretty good. So, and I just dot, get some powder in there, and I just go over and kind of set that. And you can see it just adds just a little bit of, um, and go over your eyes. And then down your neck. And I've got, I haven't broken out right there in so long. I wonder what's going on with that. Anyway. So. Okay, and that gives you a good base to do your, you know, um, well, it gives you a good foundation. It won't stick when you put your contour and stuff on. Okay, I'm loving the Too Faced palette. And I'm so glad I thought about this. You know, I, I made the mistake of saying that, um, no, it's Tarte. I made the mistake of call, say, talking about the Too Faced chocolate bronzer. Well, it you're right, that is the Too Faced that I was talking about, and that palette was tart, but it does still smell like chocolate, so I don't know, I don't know, that must just be a, I don't know, a coincidence or something. I thought I was losing it, and then I went and read some reviews, and I read some other reviews that say it smell, smells like chocolate, too. Even the brush smelled like chocolate when I was using it, so anyway, sorry I messed up on that, <laughs> but um, this is the Lorac Pro Contour Palette, and I really like it. The reason I got it is because um, Morgan, that does my hair, she uses it, and I've always loved her this contour. This is the Sedona Lace 850 brush. It's another one of my favorite brushes. And so what I first do is use this medium contour color, and I go into the medium. This is kind of like my bronzer. So I bronze all around my hairline like that, and then like that. So I'm not doing a really, you know, distinct bronze, but, and then I tap into the medium and then usually just one time in the dark and do my jawline. So I kind of blend it like that and then I blend down to create that shadow. And I feel like that is just very, very important. So tap, tap, and then tap like that. And see, sometimes you can even see a line, but don't be alarmed. You can blend it out like that. And then sometimes I'll go into this light contour and just kind of blend that out even more like that. And then I'll take this light contour and just kind of go down my nose like that and just you know go around and see if I got it all blended in good okay and then pretty much this brush just cleans itself off I might just dust it off on my towel over here then I'm gonna go into this beige highlight and go right here and then above my mouth like that and then the yellow And then the shimmer like that and then you are ready for your blush so I'm going to use this is one of my favorite blushes and I think a lot of it is really the Jane like Iredale cheeky blush and it's just a good pink color um, and I think it's kind of like a it's it's a blue pink definitely but I think it's a universal just blushy you know, like a natural blushy color. And um, I remember when I used to go to Pat at another like salon spa and I asked her what her favorite, they sold Jane Ardell too. I asked her what her favorite blush was, the makeup artist there, and she said Cheeky also. So I think it's one of their most popular ones. So I'm gonna use this same brush, dab a little bit in Cheeky, and I'm gonna start up here on my cheekbone, like right in between that contour bronzer and the highlight and then um, kind of go on my cheek button, and then I'm going to come right down. I've been trying to come a little bit further in, a little bit higher up 
to kind of widen my face a little bit. So just like that and just kind of blend it in like that. See if that's showing. And this blush has like a little kind of a glow of its own. It's not really a sparkly color, but you can see it kind of glows on its own. So there we go. So that is about all that I do for the um, foundation part. Um, I am going to go fix plus it generously and then use either my space heater or my hair dryer to dry it real quick. And then we'll move on to the I eyes and the lips. I have misplaced that little La Mer powder that she sent me. And I have been just lost without it. I have tried the Laura Mercier translucent powder. I've tried my um, Makeup Forever powder. None of them create the finish like that La Mer translucent powder does. And I think I'm just going to give up and go ahead and order a full size one. I think it's pretty expensive, but it lasts forever. It's a big container of it. So right now I'm going to use this. I really like these. It's the um, by Beauty Blender, the Blotterazzi. And um, I use these a lot when I just want to make sure I'm not too shiny, like right there. And then you still have that glow. But really that powder would be better. John just came home from the gym. <laughs> True love. He brought me the Diet Coke. <laughs> he knew. Okay, so um, now what I want to do is my lips. And I cannot find my ideal liner. <laughs> got an APB on my ideal. Brooke didn't know where it was either. I don't know. Sometimes when I use something a lot like that, I'll, I looked in my purse, but I'll stick it somewhere crazy, like, you know, in with my brushes or something like that. I looked in my, look at this, in the wrong spot. Huh. This little brush comes with that Lorac palette, and it's not a bad little brush. If you, I don't need to do any chiseling. My face is um, thin and bony enough, but um, it's too, I'd like to put some fat back in mine, but um, it is a nice brush if you, if you like to do that with your cheekbones. Okay, this is Nude Tan, and it is very similar to the Ideal, and I've really liked it. I've used it on my, you can see on my Instagram. So I'm going to use this to line my lips. Okay, and you see how I turn the pencil to the side, and I don't overline, but I like to go right on that very edge of my lips. And the lipstick I'm going to use is this Louboutin lipstick in, oh, I think the color is called Tattoo, and it's just a beautiful nude color here. See if you can see, it's so pretty. And the texture is amazing. And see how I'm going right on top of that lip liner. And then really rub it in together and then you kind of mix all of that in. There we go. So that is a good just nude lip. This stuff feels so good. I'm going to have to order another one of these. I'm just going to break down and order another one because if any of you out there have some other good colors, some good nude colors or peachy nude or pinky nude colors, I really love that. It just feels so solid and creamy and good on your lips. It doesn't feel slick or, I don't know, it just feels like it's going to stay on very, very well. Kind of like the Tom Fords do. Okay, so let's get started with the eyes. Um, I'm going to do my toughest taupe because I really think it helps when you start off with a dark base or even like um, sometimes I'll use MAC Groundwork paint pot and it's not even that dark. That is one of my favorite, favorite paint pots. I can throw on Groundwork paint pot and some liner and go. I mean, it's just a really good one, but this is the toughest taupe and you can see that it is a grayish taupe 
and I'm going to use this brush, which I really like. It's the Cream Shadow Brush from Bobbi Brown, and I just load up my brush, and what I like to do is to look straight on in the mirror and kind of put the shadow right where you would like a winged liner. So I start right out here, and I work over. And that is the advantage of using a brush versus your hands or your finger. Because when I put do my finger, I always go out too far or I don't have a good line. It just ends up being a mess. But if you use this brush and then try to get close to your lashes, and then I literally, in that crease, kind of do like I would do with a blending brush. I kind of blend it out in that crease. And I make sure it's showing with my eyes open just a little bit. And don't worry about, you know, blending that edge out because you'll do that with your liner. Okay, so I'm loading my brush up again. I'm gonna do the other side like that. And I usually start just like with a wing and work myself over. And you want it to be darker on the outer side most of the time anyway. I'm gonna do like that and then I literally go in that crease. And see, I have that part of my eye right there that comes down that I like to do a little bit darker anyway. I treat that as part of my lid or crease color right there. And that's last night when I was thinking of doing a tutorial and what I was going to tell you guys. Because um, I try to tell you things that I've learned that help me is, and I like to bring it up and kind of see how it's coming like on a little point do that bring in like a little point right there um, but I wanted to tell you I think the most one of the most valuable things you can do is to learn your eye shape learn what your particular eye shape is and then um, learn what looks best on it and then go with that don't try to just do whatever look you see whether it works good on you or not because I have done that for years now and you can go back in my videos and see all the craziness I have done it looks crazy and this might look crazy in a couple years too to me but anyway um, so now that I've got that you can kind of blend that out if you want to like on the edges but you don't really need to okay and then I'll end up having to wash that just usually I have a paper towel here with Mac brush cleaner and I would clean that off okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is my crease color and I'm gonna use one of these guys makeup artist brushes uh, let's do number four and I'm going to use this palette today. I've been using this a lot. And the first color I'm going to use is this brown color right here. And these are oh so pigmented. So just barely touch your brush in there. And then um, I'm going to do my crease color. Try to keep it, you know, right there in the crease like that. And then I do kind of go down into that part right there. And that's up to you according to your eye shape like that. I always start on the outer edge and then work in because that's where you want it to be the darkest. And keep in mind you're going to be using your wing liner too. And I just realized I did not bring up a highlight color that I wanted to use. I have to go downstairs and get it. That's the one thing that is a negative about like these palettes that are like all dark or something is I still end up needing like one other shadow. Whereas that first matte palette, the Visart first matte basics or whatever, 01, you have everything you need right there. Okay, so now that I've got that crease color and I'm looking dead straight into my mirror and I can see, um, I might wanna come out just a little bit further with this, but you can always do this at the end. Okay, the next color I'm going to use, I'm just going to brush off my brush, and I'm going to go in. I've been enjoying using these blue colors right here at the end, and I really like this one. So I lay up my brush, and I just kind of pat it right on the eyelid and blend it out. And kind of blend it up into that. Just don't take it. Keep it lower. I just kind of blend it right into that brown like that
and try to get your darkest right here at the lash line. And then. Okay, and then I need to go get my highlight color because that kind of smooths out all the so, edges. I was right <laughs> thinking all the way downstairs. Now, I know you're looking at this now and you're thinking that looks terrible, and it does. It always looks terrible until the end. So now I went and got this, which is the palette I was talking about. This is a Visart Basic 01. This is probably my favorite still. This is the one I would recommend you getting first. But I'm going to take this color right here. And I'm going to take a fluffier brush. Let's see, I like that um, that one that's like a 217, but it's flat. Where is that brush? It's right here. It is the number six brush. And I'm going to take that color, and then I'm going to go like this. And you'll see how it will just blend out that crazy looking top edge. So this is the Waterproof Ultra Liner in Black by Maybelline. It's just one of my favorites. Okay, so I usually just, I know I'm going to put on some pretty thick lashes so I can do a pretty thick line here. So first I just get my line. And see, now I've already got my shadow. And that's what's good about this versus, um, of course, a pencil or a... Um, pen is with the brush it's easier to do this where you kind of just well it didn't do or you just flick it up and then you flick it back down that did not work as well as it usually does I think it's because I'm long distance here and then I just come back down and to reload and so I usually just come back down and come across like that. And it's going to look crazy right now because I don't have my lashes on. And of course you don't have to do this big of a wing like that. And I would probably do a neater, better job if I were in my bathroom close to my mirror like I usually am. Okay, so I'm going to do the other eye. I try not to talk so much. And as you can see, I did this side better than this side. So, let me see. Turn my camera up just a little bit. Okay, so that always, that's typical of what would happen. So I'll try to, okay, so I'll just try to take off this bottom. A little bit more like that. And... There we go, like that. My eyes are very uneven anyway. Okay, so now it's time to put on lashes, and I'm going to put on these lashes that I swear, I bet I have worn these. This will probably be the probably fifth time or so. I posted them on my Instagram. They're the Eyelure um, Vegas Nay lashes, and this morning I pulled the built-up glue off of them, and I'm going to wear them again. I've already got them cut to fit my eyes, and I'm just going to keep on wearing them until I can't wear them anymore. This one has got a little kitty fuzzy in it. Imagine that. Glad I saw that before I put them on. But they are just beautiful. Look how thick they are. So it keeps me, I don't have to wear two pair with these. And they just go on. See how they're always already so curved? And then I'm using the Duo Glue Dark. And I usually just put it right on my countertop because it's that latex glue. 
it will just clean right off, rub right off. And then take a Q-tip, dip it in the glue, and then I just lightly touch the lash. You don't want to put too much. I have found that when I try to take it directly from the glue to the lash, I usually put on too much, and sometimes I've had some mistakes where it like globs all While over the lash. While those are drying, I'm going to use this, which is the Smashbox Blonde Brow Tech Gloss Stick and not do very much. I'm just going to come right down here and fill in where it's kind of sparse. I'm going to try not to, bad about adding too much, I'm going to try not to add. You can see I didn't even brush them. I probably should have. And then you can brush, brush them right like that. And I love this. It's so easy. And the color's really Good. There's that empty space. And then add a little bit to the edge. And then just brush it out. Okay, now let's try to put the lashes on. These are my old tweezers that have already been ruined by putting on lashes, so that's what I use these for. And uh, just grab the lash. And then they, these just should just sit right down. Oh gosh, I haven't put on my mascara. Oh no. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put the lashes on because I'm scared they're going to. Typically, I would put on my mascara. And we're going to set these right down. I don't need much mascara with these anyway. And um, then just stick them to. They should just go kind of right in place because I've already worn these. Sometimes I just grab them and you can feel them going right to the right spot. Okay. Touch that down. Touch that down. Just make sure they're all touching. Okay, and I'm feeling like my camera is at a bad angle for you guys to see. You're not seeing, you're too high up, I think. But we'll just see how it goes. I won't know, do I watch this back? Then the next thing we're okay. going to do is tweak the eyeshadow. Okay, so I'm going to come over here to that um, palette again, the number one palette, and take that highlight color and I will just go under here again like that and just clean it up and then you can see if you need any more down there um, like I think I need some more right in here so I'm going to take that I think I'm going to take a little bit of that dark brown color and add that right in here yeah like that or it's not the dark, it's this color right here. And I'll add it right here. And then you can also take a little bit more of this blue. And then you can go to the end of your wing and just flick it up. And bring that out just a little bit further. And make that nice point with your color that you're using. And then wipe off your brush. And then go in with that highlight color again. Ah. And let's go with that little bit lighter color. And kind of blend out that edge right there. Okay, so looking straight on. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to go get my mascara. Okay, so I usually use like... Covergirl Lash Blast or something, but this mascara is really good. Um, it is the Stila Huge Extreme Lash. And because I'm having to go up under those lashes, um, I wanted to use one that had like more on the brush, and this does. So I'm just going to go like that. Because the main ones I want to get are up under here. And then touch those. like that and pull these out to blend. 
This is the Smoke Urban Decay liner that I've been loving to put just on my bottom waterline, just on the outer edge, like that. Yesterday I just picked up my Chanel waterproof liner, the one that rolls up just because I saw it first and put it on my bottom waterline and it just went all over the place. I mean within like an hour and this just stays so much better. And you can put on mascara on your lower lashes if you want to, but I prefer not to. I just like that little bit of darkness like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is my concealer and I use so many different things but I always come back to this and it's the um, Dream Lumi by Maybelline little clicky pen and I usually put just a little bit right in here right in that darkness Ooh. and when a lot comes out like that a lot of times I'll take it and just I'm gonna pat it out right in that dark area and then kind of blend it down that and then if you want to you can put you can do the whole thing like that put a little bit more right there okay and I think I am done now this uh, would look so much better if I had done it in so my that bathroom. that may be my worst tutorial in history. <laughs> no, I think there's one worse. That one where I was doing the Wet n Wild palette years ago, that was the worst one. But anyway, I hope you got at least one little tiny smidgen of something out of it. Um, like I said, it's tough for me to... I don't know it's just so much I admire those people that can do just the beautiful tutorials because it's so much harder to do when you're not in your, you know, atmosphere your usual setup and stuff like that but um and this is a dark look but I love it and um so um I had to recurl my hair a little bit but it's running outside it's so I'm not worried about it too much that I just got from Oliver last time I was in there and I love the color it's like a blushy pink color and I didn't have any of the v-neck so I have just been loving the tees and just throwing it on with a moto jacket um, so I'm going to do a quick outfit of the day, and then I will let yeah, you go. I have on I'll be right some back. older jeans. These are my frame, um, lay skinny jeans. Um, I just threw on my rag and bone Newberry booties. Um, this little Vince V-neck tee. I think she said she does. They don't make this color anymore. So I think there was just a few left. I just love this blushy nude kind of color. And then this is my. Um, a Neen Bing leather moto jacket, but I don't think I'm going to wear this today because it's raining. So, but that is the look that I was going for. Just, but I wanted to show me. you guys this before they get all gone. I bought one of these for myself and my sister-in-law. It's a really cool, like, it's that blue, it's, I think it's called gray smoke, but this really cool faux fur jacket that I bought at the Loft, Ann Taylor Loft. It is so pretty. I love the collar, and it was half off. Does it have pockets? Yeah, there are the pockets. And um, this is the extra small, small, and then they have a medium, large. And I think I saw online that it, they only have the extra small, small, but don't be scared because it's, you know, plenty big for me, and I would typically wear a small or a medium. And I just thought it was so pretty. I wanted to tell you guys about it before they sold out, if they haven't already, because I did get it. I think Saturday so and then that's it oh and this is that below the belt I believe it's called the Frank belt it is <laughs> and I love it it just adds a little bit of something and then for accessories I just have on my good old I think they're called Lisa eternity hoops from Sheila Fajal they're just good to put on when you want to put on just something basic or whatever on and then my nail polish is one of my favorites it's OPI funny bunny and I believe that's it. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And it's I will Saturday see or Sunday you. since Christmas is on Friday. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.